Breaking Banks Europe podcast brings you European unicorns, startups, founders, regulators, and leaders, all innovating in the rapidly evolving fintech scene. Hi, I'm Matteo Rezzi. I am Ajit Tripathi. This is Matthias Kröner. I'm Megan Johnson. I am Paolo Cironi. I'm Nina Mohanty. Join us and some of the world's most well-known hosts and influencers in fintech as we bring you insights into European fintech. Find us wherever you normally listen to your podcasts or at provoke.fm. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Breaking Banks Europe. My name is Nina Mohanty, and I'm your co-host today. Today, we're following our series of a series of ecosystem zoom-ins, and we are focusing on the great Sweden today. Um, This is a super exciting episode for me, um, not least because I think Sweden was the last place I went before the pandemic. (laughs) Um, I went for work uh, to go visit the Klarna headquarters for the first time. Um, and I was lucky enough to, you know, do the touristy bits and go see Gamla Stan and um, go and, and have some pastries and coal fish. There's lots of coal fish in Sweden. Um, so I didn't get to stay for as long as I would like, but I've always very much enjoyed, um, well, Swedish culture. I think we all do, especially as Americans. But I'm really excited to be joined today by a rock star group, uh, a panel, including Mikhail Hussein, from, who is the CEO of AnyFin. How are you doing today, Mikhail? Really well. Thanks Wonderful. For me. Thank you so much for being here. We also have Anna Bieblina, who is the co-founder of Stockholm Fintech Week and also um, works in partnerships at Mambu. Hi, Anna. How are you doing? Hi, I'm doing very well. Thank you. Did I do okay on your name? Yes, you did. You nailed it. It's perfect. Okay. Uh, Last but not least, we have Tanya Yulkia, who is head of payments at Tink. Did I do okay, Tanya, with your name? You did incredibly well. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. Thank you so much. So I think the first thing is to kind of set the scene because, of course, we are talking about fintech. So um, I will go ahead and ask Mikhail if you want to share a little bit about yourself and what you're up to at AnyFin. Sure. Um, so, uh, I mean, I've been in fintech now for more than a decade. Uh, I, I joined, uh, you know, Klarna in the very early innings of that thing. Um, and, and sort of, I've always had my career uh, in credit risk, working with that, uh, which is essentially a, a large part of finances. And, uh, you know, so seeing the inner workings of financing, you know, seeing what it provides people in terms of opportunities and tools to plan your economy, uh, get access to goods and services, all of the good stuff, you know, throughout my career, I also got exposed to the bad stuff and getting to know the industry from within. And that never really sat well with me. Um, So four years ago, I co-founded Anything uh, with Sven and Philip, my two co-founders. And, you know, we set out to really change the lives uh, uh, for people to the better, their financial lives. Um, Our beachhead product is the ability to refinance any unsecured consumer debt that you have uh, in a matter of seconds by just taking a picture of that monthly credit card bill uh, or, you know, connect to your uh, bank. Right. So really getting access to the rate that you actually deserve uh, without getting ripped off. Um, and then obviously providing with a lot of utilities on top of that to make sure that you can really make the most out of your finances. Right. Right the wrongs of your financial path, get control of your economy here and now so you can build your financial future. Amazing. I love that mission. Um, Anna. Would you mind telling us a little bit about yourself and also what spurred you on to co-found Stockholm Fintech Week? Absolutely happy to be to do that. So I've been in the fintech space throughout five years now. Started at the Stockholm Fintech Hub. Our is I think that's where I've met Tanya when she was still working at Izetel. So hi Tanya, happy to be here with you now. Um, so worked a lot with, within the fintech industry in the Nordic, Sweden specifically. Got inspired by the whole movement and the ecosystem itself. How how that's 
changed and mature actually since the, the, the beginning of my journey. And um, always wanted to learn, actually. That was the reason I was very much thirsty for knowledge. That's what's driving me to start the Stockholm FinTech Week. Uh, this is a yearly event, community driven initiative where we put knowledge are as an important uh, key and we open up for all the different actors in the financial ecosystem to come in and share what happened there uh, with them or, or some bad or posit uh, positive experiences with the community and uh, we did that pretty well at the first year 2019 we survived the pandemic as well so we had it there uh, our online edition our 2021 and we were lucky enough to have 2020 event actually physical we uh, we had it in february just before the pandemic so i i thought maybe you will we were at the stockholm fintech week but you've mentioned that <laughs> before the pandemic you were in sweden um, so pretty much excited uh, what happens there in the whole ecosystem in general are uh, and wanted to learn so brought all the other people to help and support and we all there for their way of collaborating, uh, sharing knowledge and unite the community that's the whole uh, meaning of, of the initiative actually. That's brilliant and next time I will come back for Stockholm Fintech Week it would be um, a lot of fun because you know what? I still haven't been to the Vasa Museum. That's still on my checklist. So I'll come back for that. <laughs> you should. That's one of the most important museums in Stockholm. Exactly. Um, Tanya, it's a very exciting day and very serendipitous. Um, the news has come out this morning that Tink will be acquired by Visa. So very, very exciting. Um, why don't you tell us a bit about you and then your role at Tink. Um, Anna mentioned that you were at iZettle before, so you have kind of been at some of the greats of Stock, uh, Stockholm FinTech, really. Um, yeah, yeah, thank you. It certainly has been a very busy morning. Um, <laughs> I can I can circle back around on that. Um, yeah, so so my own background uh, is that I, I started out my career at, at, at Rocket Internet in Australia, actually building out uh, six different ventures, uh, six different ventures there. Then I, I co-founded my own startup, you know, less successfully, but I I tried to uh, to basically do what Kana does uh, in Australia, um, and um, and and. And, you know, we got live with the product and it was a super fun experience. Eventually, I, you know, returned back to the Nordics. Um, I'm from Denmark. Um, and I remember I actually interviewed with with Husse um, from, from Thailand, of all places. So I interviewed with Mikael when he was still at, at Klana um, back then. So uh, so eventually I, I went to join Klana, um, which I did in, in 2015. And then I have been been at Klana, I've been at iSettle, um, and now at Tink. So, so yeah, I've been I've been around uh, the the Stockholm the Stockholm fintech scene. Um, it's an incredibly you know exciting, vibrant environment. Um, Stockholm truly is the the Silicon Valley of 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 the North, um, and it's uh, it's a very very fun place to to build your career. And now, of course, with with Tink. Um, uh, you know, it's a it's a open banking platform. Um, you, we are connected to to more than three and a half thousand banks, and we we reach uh, more than two hundred and fifty million bank customers. Um, Think was founded in two thousand twelve. Um, we have more than four hundred employees. Um, we have made a couple of acquisitions of companies, and now also finally we have gotten acquired ourselves. Um, so uh, so of course it's uh, it's it's been a it's been a very long, fun journey for Tink, and um, uh, I'm excited to be joining at this stage. Amazing! Wow, we have three former Clarnots on this on this podcast episode. You know, it's really funny because I feel like in Europe everyone knows Klarna, but um, I actually was hired to go out and help with the West Coast operations and open up the office in California. And back then, no one knew what Klarna was, but they certainly do now. So um, we'll talk about that more later. But I kind of want to circle back to something that you said, Anna, where you talked about um, how you felt that the ecosystem had come so far and, and a big part of 
founding Stockholm FinTech Week was wanting to bring people together to kind of foster those connections, but also to kind of commemorate the progress um, in Stockholm FinTech. So I wonder if you could walk us through how exactly you see that the ecosystem has evolved um, in not just the three years that Stockholm FinTech Week has been around, but even before that? Sure. Uh, well, I, I can uh, also uh, relate to, to Tanya's uh, comment that uh, Stockholm is truly really Silicon Valley at the north. So we are mm-hmm. out of the whole Nordics. Others will hate us, but we actually quite, <laughs> good, quite good and we are one of the top. Well, you just look at the numbers and then you will see how, how the whole ecosystem involves. Um, I just... I'm just very happy to be part of it, it really. Like with, with the journey I had, I saw go uh, with the FinTech ecosystem itself. We started where everyone were a bit afraid of sharing or working with each other. We had the regulator a bit more, I would say, are traditional than it's now. And uh, together with the group of Sogo Beater Hub, we, we did have some great uh, achievements. And one of them were we were pushing for the sandbox uh, at, uh, to having that in Sweden. We didn't achieve it, but we pushed for further enough to, to open up the Innovation Center, which is an arm of our, of our uh, FSA, in uh, local FSA, which talks in, uh, uh, directly with the, with the startups and fintech companies we also i also seen myself how team grew because that's uh, that was a quite a dramatic journey back then and of course we had clanner we had other players coming into the place like trustly became unicorn and so forth we see how a bit smaller a smaller type of fintech companies they go far away and they became one of their our uh, icons which we like to show it, to share uh, uh, on the international uh, arena and say hey that's what we have we we have a proof of uh, of the fact that Stockholm is a, one of the best ecosystems I think there also just to mention how that's matured we see a lot of collaborations um, from from the start it was a bit different now the collaboration is the key there's a lot of acquisition happens there's a lot of different collaboration between banks and fintechs are happening as well and we see that also from our banks and bank and banks and banks for example p27 is an initiative that's also been uh, quite a new and recent we see what happens so with the central bank of sweden how bis is also establishing a hub in stockholm are for the nordic um, Region. We also see the Ecron development. There's so much happens in all from all the different actors in the financial ecosystem, and they all there to to work, collaborate, and potentially bring the projects to life. So we see the proof that the Silicon Valley exactly is there, and we see more and more um, interesting uh, companies are coming, more stars, and the, the talent. The talent is also there. The talent is uh, helping and supporting our. Uh, the bigger guys and also they sometimes leave bigger guys and they go and create their own startups and they're having the great journey to to share and it's also like becomes a role models for the other companies to to come up and uh, and make a solution that potentially was not really there yet amazing um, on that note, though, Tanya, you you were in Australia. You came back um, home to the Nor- <laughs> to the Nordics, um, but came to Stockholm, and you you did kind of have an opportunity to work at kind of the three very big, well known um, Stockholm fintech. So, to Anna's point about um, maybe people going from the bigger companies and then kind of. I won't say trickling down, but um, bringing their talent, bringing their know-how to other businesses. Have you found that this is something that you see in Stockholm quite a bit or or across Sweden, I should say, more broadly? Yeah, I mean, definitely. I I think um, it's interesting, the three companies... Um, Kana, Isel, uh, and Tink. I mean, they were they were effectively founded uh, with a couple of years uh, in between. Um, and also, I think you can definitely throw throw Trusty in the mix there. Um, so, so yeah. I mean, I think it's it's a very um, 
it's a very it's a very interesting uh, mix of people that is actually produced in companies uh, for an example uh, like Klarna um, you know out of Klarna alone you have a number of of you know you know founders of very successful companies coming out of Klarna you know Michael included um, so so I think it's it's a very it's a very fun sort of environment because this mm. this whole environment of innovation, fintech, and you know successful startups. Well, it actually breeds this next generation of of successful startups and and co-founders um, co-founders. So so I think one one example is of course um, you have the uh, the Skype co-founder, which is which is one of the the yeah. early. Uh, the early Swedish success stories, um, you know, who started Atomico and then eventually invested invested into Klarna. So you have a lot of recycled uh, capital in the in the system, um, and and um, I would say sort of the you have a lot of that recycled capital in in the system, but then you 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 also have a, a strong history, uh, I think, in Sweden, which is quite unique from from its Nordic neighbors, of um, of innovation and also big industrial companies, you know, like IKEA, Volvo, H and M, um, you know. So there is there is a very special environment in Sweden that has created this, you know, very blossoming, um, very blossoming uh, environment um, for for startups and, and fintechs. Amazing. I mean, just, can I just add to that a bit? Yes, um, please. I was coming to you. <laughs> no, but um, I, I think one of the things that, that maybe not everybody realizes is that, you know, the history goes back quite far. Mm. Um, you know, Klana, I don't know how old this, how old it is now, but maybe 16 years, 17 16, years. 16, yeah, 16 yeah. years. It's, it's been around for a while. And, and then you have sort of going even further back, you have sort of technology and infrastructure being part of Stockholm for, for a long time. You know, Ericsson leading the way with you know, mm. uh, uh, telecommunications, right? And that was actually, if you look at the early platforms that Klana built, it was built a, a lot in the same sort of technology stack that Ericsson used at the time, mm -hmm. right? So all of these things, um, you know, to the previous point, made, do recycle. And I think it goes, you know, across multiple dimensions, um, people, uh, money. And at the end of the day, uh, I think in order to sort of dare to take the leap or to be an entrepreneur or to sort of grow a company, you need two things, really. You need role models and you need resources, right? Mm -hmm. uh, role models so you can understand that it, it can be done, right? Mm -hmm. And you see, you know, going back far, a lot of those, you know, companies, uh, you know, that have really made it internationally. Uh, and then, you know, secondly, the resources, and that comes across in talent, you know, money, but in many regards, also access to technology, right? Uh, especially, in, you know, in the early innings of fintech or technology, that was a, played a much larger factor uh, than it probably does today with, you know, everything being in the cloud and easily accessible. Yeah. Well, speaking of that, I wanted to ask about capital, right? So we've talked about kind of human capital and how that's so wonderful. And actually, one of the funny things is people seem to ricochet. I, I remember speaking to my former co-workers at Klarna and they they ricochet. Sometimes they even come back to Klarna, you know, they like recycle through and come back. Um, but to your point about capital, the, of course, that is kind of the age old problem. And we've seen a huge interest in Europe and the Nordics in the past few years. Um, I think, you know, Sequoia has set up an office in London to just solely focus on Europe and Seed Camp has obviously been doing really well um, with the with the IPO of UiPath and lots of other great businesses like this. And we've seen a lot of exits, right? So we've seen PayPal um, acquire iZettle. Of course, today, the great news about um, Tink being acquired by Visa, astronomical valuations. But I wonder if you can, maybe we'll start with you, Mikhail, because you have presumably fundraised and what is the landscape like? Because, you know, we talk about Atomico, we can talk about EQT, Almi, I mean, even Norskin Foundation um, has a venture arm, right? So I'm curious um, how you find the VC landscape or funding landscape in Sweden. 
Um, I think it's changed quite a bit over the years. Um, mm -hmm. and if you go back a bit, it, it wasn't necessarily the sort of international West Coast investors that were present. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we, we've been fortunate enough to partner with, um, you know, Axel uh, and, um, you know, EQT and North Zone and FinTech Collective sort of representing mm -hmm. the West in Europe and, and, and the US, right? And I don't think that necessarily was the case uh, if we would have, you know, done this 10 years ago. Um, mm -hmm. And I think uh, there's a few different reasons for that. You know, in isolation, if you look at it, Sweden is a very small market. And it makes no sense if you have sort of, you know, uh, pools of capital to invest into sort of a niche market, right? Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it's a bit of an oxymoron almost, like Sweden being a small market, right? Uh, which uh, means that I think a lot of companies think about internationalization day mm -hmm. one, right? Yeah. Uh, and it goes beyond, you know, fintech. It's the same with Spotify. It's the same, you know, across uh, a lot of what is built out of the Nordics. And I think it took uh, a bit of a while um, to, for, for sort of the, the capital to understand that. But when it did, I think it sort of opened it up and, and saw that you could, you know, starting off here in the Nordics might not sound as the most appealing thing, but you could see the global potential in the products and services that were being built. And obviously capital is attracted to that. Yeah, I, I definitely see that. Um, and what a long way we've come. We're actually gonna go to break now. Stick with us listeners, because we're gonna dive into some great topics when we come back. The FTS Fest is back. As 2021 develops, it will become more and more apparent how this year can truly mark the start of a second fintech revolution. Starting with a focus on sustainability, financial inclusion and impact investing, topics that today must be considered transversely, we'll explore trends that are already shaking up the industry, such as embedded and decentralized finance plotting. Be part of the fintech revolution 2.0. Join ftsfest.com. Welcome back to our episode, Ecosystem Zoom In of Sweden. We have been talking about the wonderful uh, ecosystem in, in Stockholm beyond just the usual players. So we're not talking about IKEA. Well, we kind of did, <laughs> didn't we? Um, IKEA or Volvo, but we actually haven't made a reference to ABBA yet. So I have to just drop that in. So we cover all our bases. We've done the Sweden bingo. Uh, <laughs> but before we went to break, we were discussing the VC landscape. And um, off the back of that, Mikael was, was explaining to us how because Sweden is a paradoxically small but large market, a lot of businesses are going into it thinking about interna internationalization from day one. And so I wonder if um, you can provide some perspective on that, Tanya, in terms of going beyond the reaches of Sweden, of course, and perhaps even beyond the Nordics more broadly, but into Europe, the UK, as Tink has done. Yeah, so I think that's that's uh, certainly one of the most fun parts uh, about Tink because we really provide an open platform, um, so that you know other fintechs uh, can actually connect uh, to to our platform. So both big institution as well as startups are doing that, and I think it's so rewarding when you see the type of actually innovation and creativity that comes out of that. Um, and I think just two good examples, and, and they are from Sweden, um, is, uh, is, is, is that we, we had this, this one uh, app that actually um, uh, basically uh, prevented like a cashback for recycled bottles. Um, so, and they're using basically our system to, to do that. We also have another app which is uh, used by, you know, a lot of the Swedish citizens. Uh, I would say it's, it's definitely more than, 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 than 2 million Kivra. So they um, aggregate all of your, all of your invoices, uh, digital invoices, and and has the ability for for you to pay them. So you get your pay slips, your invoices um, sent to to Kibra, so it's a digital mailbox, and then you 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 go ahead and you basically do your your admin and and your payment all from there. Um, and this is a a a, a, um, 
this is a, an app that's completely taking off in in Sweden right now. So they they they, they definitely deserve deserve a shout out. Um, but I think it's it's also um, yeah, it's just very interesting that um, that I think you know you can provide a platform, and out of that you know will grow so many businesses that you haven't even had the imagination to to think about um and i think you know you made a reference to alba and then i have to make a reference to um that sweden is the highest uh music export per capita in the world so i think it goes back to sort of this this incredibly creative environment mm -hmm. that stretches well beyond tech uh, probably is tech is very inspired you know from this you know creative uh, creative environment that you know sweden has a history of that's amazing and actually you know what i only found out speaking of abba i'm going to out myself right now mm -hmm. i grew up my my parents are immigrants to the us so when you grow up in an immigrant household, you hear a lot of like pop culture, but you don't really know who it is or what it is. And my mother was obsessed with ABBA. Mm -hmm. So I grew up listening to ABBA, but I didn't know who ABBA was or what they were. And I didn't know that they won Eurovision. So I only learned that a few years ago, <laughs> which is kind of a big part of their story. And I feel like I should have known that earlier, but now if you didn't know that, now you know. Um, that is really, really brilliant. And I wonder, um, from your perspective, um, Anna, you are now in Amsterdam. You know, there are obviously lots of um, Swedish fintech businesses that are available across across Europe, in the US, around the world. So I wonder, from your perspective, like, is, <laughs> is it almost like a bit of um, soft power, like a cultural um diplomacy almost in in spreading Swedish fintech <laughs> I would say that um the whole Nordic and Swedish touch is very unique mm. and um I think the reason why we have such a few very successful cases they keep they keep coming is because of their of their the whole ecosystem atmosphere the mentality of a collaboration approach Everybody mm -hmm. wants to do things together. Um, they're not bit competing in a way. I would say it's, it's competitions happens here. Everyone comes in with their idea of do things and collaborate. And it's also a circle back to, to Michael's point that um, everyone thinks internationally in, in the Nordics and Sweden specifically from the day one because they know they need to grow. And, it might, and that's why it's very competitive in, in the country itself. But it's also get, like if you survive in Sweden, for example, because there's a lot of great people and talent that we already mentioned. So there's a lot of competition internally. And if you make that through for really, like, you know, further years and then you have an MVP and successful business, then you're very much ready to conquer the world. And then I think that's what Tink did was pivoting at the start. Uh, at the start, they had one, one, one solution and they pivot and they went very much across the European region and, and further. And uh, I think that's also Klaner's journey when they, they cracked the whole Swedish uh, the whole Swedish market and they just rock star right away after. And that was what we see, we see now, just to, to give some names which were not mentioned, Lunar, which yes. is Nordic, um, then Danish to start with, but they're having a very good Nordic presence. And they actually acquired recent Lentify, a Swedish uh, company. They also acquired a company to watch. And we also have Trustly, which we already mentioned before, which I potentially think they're gonna, we're gonna hear or see some big news coming from them soon as well mm -hmm. and um, so there's so much happens uh, in in the nordics which gives an opportunity for us to be proud about being in part of this uh, of a swedish ecosystem specifically because when you are outside of the nordics for trips or anything like that everybody look up to you they feel like wow you have such a great uh, ecosystem you have so many good successful stories and they just keep coming and people are very collaborative they 
to support each other. As Tanya mentioned before, uh, the feed, uh, the ecosystem feeds each other. They're moving from different, um, potentially present different actors even in the, in, the, in the ecosystem. We know that the former financial minister on this board became uh, an investor and he supports the fintech startups. And, and that's also like just one of the good examples of how we all sort of together and uh, that's pretty unique, I would say, for for the ecosystem in general. Amazing. I think on your point of collaboration, I, I wanted to talk about a lot of the incumbents, the financial institutions that do exist, obviously, in Sweden, of course. And a few of the different product lines that we've talked about are almost like finding that something wasn't doing right or or being built fast enough or keeping pace with innovation um and at any fin you know with your kind of refinancing of loans it's kind of well i imagine someone's gone out and issued a credit card and they want to refinance that something like that or um was it kivra where you're kind of like bringing kivra. together lots of kind of bills or invoices and that sort of thing and and paying those things off in one point um and I wonder how how are the incumbents kind of feeling about all of this? How do they, are they able to compete? Do they get involved and try and collaborate? Um, Mikhail, maybe you can you can start us off there. I mean, I think it's another one of those paradoxes. Um, so actually, if you look and you know at banks, um, mm -hmm. they've they've been at the forefront of technology, right? Like they've had uh, you know apps and a web presence for quite a while. And in many cases, you know, feature parity is there. Yeah. Uh, but I, you know, on the other side of that, you, you can also see that that are, you know, planting the seed and providing the infrastructure layer for a lot of innovation to sort of build upon that. And yeah. to be fair though, um, you know, if you look at, you know, what Klarna did in the early days, which was the sort of buy now, pay later, you know, pay in 14 days, right? Mm -hmm. That in itself goes back to mail ordering in the, you know, 60s, yes. meeting. Like it's the same mechanics, right? Mm -hmm. But in a different setting. And actually there were banks that provided this for the e-com, but these were the early innings and the execution was poor, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I think that that sort of speaks to, to, to some things, right? The infrastructure layer should not be sort of, you should not neglect the importance of finding some of the mechanics and then using those mechanics to build stellar products mm -hmm. and then internationalizing them, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and there, I think, you know, the, 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 the sort of foundation for a lot of innovation and building on existing things, but really perfecting it is there. Mm. I got, uh, something that I come back to often in my more recent experience working at Klarna was that, um, you have bank ID, right? So <laughs> this is something where we're like hitting our heads against a wall in the in the UK. And then mm -hmm. I I mean, heaven forbid that we even try and look at the US. I don't know when that will ever happen. And I wonder, and for me, it feels like, wow, actually the banks, the government really got together, very forward thinking to, to do this together. And so your point of like that infrastructure already existing. I mean, that brings an onboarding, like the time to onboard or the steps to onboard a customer down like by what, 10, 15 steps sometimes, depending on how long your onboarding flow is because you've just got the bank ID. And I was always blown away by how quickly the onboarding was for Sweden as compared to the other markets for Klarna um, if, if applying for a card or something like that. So I wonder um, from your perspective then, are, are we going to see um, more collaboration, Anna, between the large incumbents uh, moving forward where they are still kind of laying down the tracks, the infrastructure, but there is there are really cool things being built on top of them. Will we ever see a good mesh of these things, not just building on top, but together? It's. I don't know if you're asking me, but I think it's a great uh, it's a great it's a great question, um, and and I think we are seeing that you know P twenty seven that's definitely the banks and and sort of trying to create sort of a a, a platform for for cross border uh, real time transfers in the Nordics. Mm -hmm. um, 
there is lots of good examples. I mean, you have Bank ID, uh, definitely driven by the government, highly successful. Um, you also have, you know, Swish, our peer-to-peer -peer platform, which has also been super successful. So I think there, there, there is there are many great examples of good innovation also coming from the incumbents. Um, and and I think just the biggest banks like SwiftBank and SEB, they all have invest not they, yeah, they all have investment arms. They are all sort of buying in, you know, in a strong way to this whole sort of you know, fintech, open banking community. I think the history of that, though, is that it was a couple of trailblazing companies in Sweden, um, you know, Klarna, Vias Afford, Trustly, Tink, yeah. who laid the grounds for PSD2 and and what is today called open banking. So yeah. it, um, that's sort of where it came from. And that there was, of course... Uh, it hasn't been a straight line journey, right? But I think um, it is, as, as Michael says, it is really a paradox. And I think to a large extent, the banks are the heroes today um, also, because they are not only opening up their infrastructure, allowing for these infrastructure providers to like Tink, who built sort of, you know, easy accessible access to it, um, but they also are, are customers of it uh, themselves and see how it actually, you know, as 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 Mika said, I think they have been lacking behind for a couple of years, and now they're able to catch up. Mm, I mean, funny. to be fair, I, I'm not I'm not sure I completely share your view. I I, I don't think they they always embrace the sort of collaborative spirit, um, and and you can see sort of a lot of their, you know, um, the sort of glass half. Uh, empty sort of view on it. It's that it's a very defensive, and they missed the sort of they missed the they missed the boat on a couple of these things in the early days, right? Mm -hmm. And I think um, if you look at it, a lot of it is driven still by necessity and the, the defense, you know, defensiveness rather than sort of truly mm -hmm. harboring ambitions to you know. Uh, make it easier or to change the world for the better, right? Mm -hmm. And you can see, you know, sometimes, and I think, you know, one of the things which is going to dictate whether or not, you know, what the future is going to look like is whether or not, like, how can, you know, startups and banks get incentive alignment across these things? Because in many places right now, they're not, right? You're, you know, either they're competing on, you know, for the same customers or the same revenue, or if I open up this, what is going to happen? And you can see some of those, you know, elements with, you know, open banking and PSD2, the regulators comes in and make it easier, right? But mm -hmm. it, it requires quite a, lo a lot of, you know, a catalyst for it to happen uh, as, you know, support and think and others sort of push yep. through that. So I'm not sure that they're like, you know, the happiest scenario for them in many cases would probably be if there weren't that much innovation that pushed them forward because then they could be, you know, Fat and happy. Uh, <laughs> yes, and I think um, speaking as an American living in the UK, we find the same thing here and also in the States. So um, if you're a Swedish banker, I hope you're paying attention and uh, <laughs> reach out for some collaboration, right? Um, all right. I wanted to end on a few fun questions. This is more me than breaking banks, but when you're in Sweden, is there like a few places that everyone goes to, like a bar or a restaurant, like that's the place that everyone meets up? I This came up because I was talking to my friend who was in Kenya, in Nairobi, and she and I were chatting over Zoom and she's like, oh yeah, the founder of, of Quora's over there and the founders of Chipper Cash are over there and they're just like all in the same cafe at the same time. So are there like Stockholm places for fintech <laughs> or is that a silly question I can take it as yeah a so I would say Stockholm is, is pretty small when it comes to the, to the city and the financial district if you mm -hmm. can call it that way so you might not meet them in a specific places but you can meet them on the street so there's a few like from Tesla Challenge to Osterman store, that's the area where everybody walks around. There's all the offices of the main companies or even hubs, uh, like the co-working spaces, like uh, WeWork, Epicenter and so forth. 
you will see people running to meetings and you will meet them on the street and that's where you can so that happens with me all, quite often and then you're like oh let's catch up let's do I don't know coffee fika and then we book a meeting on the spot where we just bumped into each other and they're just a few streets they're not it's not a huge sort of area and that's what I would say like just be around that that's triangle more or less and then you'll meet all the people if you know how they look you will or like if you're yeah. <laughs> new person then you can just like meet them on the street and have a chat amazing would you would I can you... share perhaps um that I I live perhaps in the Palo Alto of uh, Stockholm so I live together with I'm neighbors with the CTO of ISIL and CMO at at Kana um and and a few <laughs> other ex-colleagues of mine and we all live together in the same building so um and now during the pandemic we've all been working from home so it's it's literally been this great mesh co-working space um because we have a place where we can work from as well so it's um oh that's amazing small world. amazing i love that and then last but not least this is going to be a tough one but i'm giving myself the challenge so the regulator in sweden is often referred to as fi or the financial super supervisory authority how do i say this in swedish <laughs> Who wants to teach me how to say it properly? Finansinspektionen. Oh my god. Finansinspektionen. Finansinspektionen. You need to say it at sort of you need to you know go down when you say it as well. Finansinspektionen. Okay. Yeah. Finansinspektionen. I'm very serious. <laughs> That's the most important. Thing. We've There always got that. There we go. Okay. I will practice that and for Stockholm FinTech Week, I will be ready to go for next year to say it properly. Well, um, this has been an amazing chat. Thank you so much for allowing me to virtually travel to Stockholm with you. It's been such a pleasure. Um, Mikael, before we go, where can our listeners find out more about you, about anything? So download our app available in an app store near you or, or go check out our website anything.com amazing and anna where can our listeners find out more about you or stockholm fintech week and the plans you have for next year linkedin to start with um that's the the place to go and of course the website so go fintechweek.com so go without the dwells mm -hmm. so 2022 is again september oh sorry in february are we ready to set up the dates and we are planning to have that as a one of the cool events um, Amazing. I'm going to have to book a ticket and remember to bring my large winter coat. Um, very welcome. And last but not least, Tanya, where can our listeners find out more about you, about the work that you're doing at Tink? You can always go to tink.com um, and I'm certainly available on LinkedIn. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Um, listeners, if you've enjoyed this, please let us know. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a rating and a review. We love to hear from you. Until next time, have a great day. Thanks for listening to Breaking Banks Europe, a Provoke Media podcast in cooperation with Fintech Stage. Don't forget to tweet us out, shout out, or post to the team at Breaking Banks EU on Twitter. If there's something or someone you'd like to hear on our cast, let us know. See you next week on Breaking Banks Europe. <laughs>